Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Chuck Shelby Risk Management Commodities, a mostly lower day in grain and livestock futures trade. And Chuck, let's start off talking a little bit about the grain trade. First of all, um, we did see kind of a sell off across the board. Was it technical selling or was there a pickup in farmer selling here today? I think it was a combination. We've had a good run in these markets. Uh, we've seen uh, farmers who rewarded this rally here. Uh, rightfully so, as we've come a long ways out of the lows we had in February. I, I think producers have wanted to move grain before they got into planting season. That was going to happen here. And then technically, we've traded up into the upper end of the ranges. Uh, we didn't have the ability to pop through there. I think if we want to move on through there, we're going to have to see something positive in report on Thursday to make that happen. Yeah. And a lot of folks basically just wanted to get out of the way before the reports come on Thursday too, didn't they? Yeah. And, and the funds have been short covering, uh, you know, they had a massive short position. So it just makes sense as we move towards the end of the, end of the month and quarter also funds like to get out. So a combination of reasons, but if we want to go higher and move out from here, we're going to have to have some reason. And right now we just don't have that reason. Yeah. Do you think that the funds are done with short covering? I mean, we're going into end of month and the end of the quarter. Uh, I think they've taken off quite a few positions, but they're still pretty heavily short when we don't know what the weather is going to be as we move into the summer. So I, I could see some more funds short covering. I don't know if there's enough reasons to get them to all move out of there without some unexpected uh, positive bullish news in the upcoming report on Thursday. Chuck, do you think that the Baltimore port closure also maybe impacted the grains, at least psychologically? Uh, that's another uncertainty to add on top of the two world conflicts we got going on. It certainly is a major impact on shipping and inputs of coming in and out of this country. So uh, another negative, it, it is a big disaster and, and, and certainly it's uh, going to have an impact on, on what happens here in the United States. So what are your thoughts heading into the reports on Thursday? Um, I know you as market analysts always try to tell me quarterly stocks is what is going to move the market, but it always seems like we cling on to those acreage numbers. And what are you expecting? Well, USDA uh, projected a really large bean acreage number at 87.5. I, I guess our feeling is that bean acres are going up, but we look for it to be a little smaller than that. You have cotton at a good price. You have Milo. You have uh, possibly canola and other crops that may take away from uh, soybeans. So we look for a bigger bean number, but maybe not as big as the 87.5. That could maybe give beans a, a little bit of a, a boost if it's 86 or 85.5. What about corn? If we are above 92 or 93, do we get a negative reaction? What's priced in already? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, when you look at using 181 trend line yield, we really need the corn acreage number to be down around 90 to give us a bullish uh, reaction. And if we come in at 92 or 92 and a half, I think that's going to be negative to the market because simply running a number with a 181 trend line yield, uh, you end up closer to 3 billion. So that certainly wouldn't be a positive and hopefully we're not going to be that big. Yeah. Quarterly stocks are always very difficult to figure out what USDA is going to do with that. But we are going to universally be above last year. There, there's just really no way around that. Uh, the thing you might look for is, do we have a little better exports? Uh, do we have better ethanol use? Do we have a little more usage that uh, really you haven't seen or understood? That's a positive that may happen in corn. On the bean side, we've had good crush, but our exports are lagging behind. So uh, important numbers, but uh, again, we'll get all kinds of data. If we come out with a, a, a less of a carry out than the market was thinking, that's going to be a positive that uh, could help us push forward. Definitely something to watch. And then after the reports, we go back to trading weather, right? Yeah, I, I think that's uh, one of the concerns uh, going forward. It looks like it's going to be an early planting season around the country. Uh, the weather is pretty dry in a lot of areas. And if we get an early planting, crop goes in quickly. On a, on a nice pace. I think generally markets don't consider that as a bullish factor if we do plant timely and we don't have much prevent plant or weather delays. Yeah. Tough down day in the cattle market. Let's talk about that one because um, part of it was the cattle on feed report. Was the other part these cases of high path avian influenza in the dairy herd? Uh, I think that's a major factor today because we had the report 
the market was down some, but kind of came back out of those lows. So uh, this report today maybe is an overreaction to that occurring. Uh, but we look at a market that's really been high priced, probably saw some movement out of it today. And, and again, uh, hopefully tomorrow uh, we're going to see cooler heads prevail and, and uh, settle down and the market can stabilize in here. Yeah. We did make new lows for the move, but at least we bounced off of those low areas. And so, you know, what areas of support held or need to hold? Uh, 179 to 180 area, that would be a, a good uh, place for this market to catch and hold. You, when you look forward, I mean, the, the demand's still there. And I think we're going to be entering into the cookout grilling season, which is uh, should show good demand as we move into that spring time frame. So I think that area will hold the market. Uh, and, and then we can get past this bird food thing, let the market settle down. And I, I think there's some positive things yet to come as we move into April and into May, certainly. Yeah, and check you had record cash trade last week, and it is above the futures at this point, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, I, I, you know, I think the futures market always reacts to the headline news, and that's what you saw today. But again, you go back to the real demand and and consumers are still willing to pay. And, and you know, I, I look for a good grilling season that's going to, bring demand back to the cattle market and to the hog market too. Yeah. Hog market has actually seen pretty good demand when you look at monthly cold storage report and cutout values being up, right? Yeah, we're, we're not oversupplied. We've been able to move that product. I think it goes back to the, the price of pork compared to beef. So it's it cleaned up that excess supply. And you look at the hog chart, we're kind of trading sideways. So I thought it was a good day today. It also pointed out that the uh, the pork didn't react negatively like the, the beef did to that uh, report about uh, the bird flu. So I think uh, pork's kind of sideways here. I think it's uh, got good support because we're not oversupplied. And I, I think I look forward to go higher as we move into the cookout season. Yeah. Uh, we also are running into the report on Thursday. And so maybe a little bit of sideways action until we get past the report, you think? Yeah, hopefully there's no big surprises in there. And, and if there's not, I think... Uh, we move forward in the pork complex, it kind of trades sideways and, and, and probably follows uh, the beef market as we move into the month of April. Okay, thanks for joining us, Chuck Shelby, Risk Management Commodities. That is Markets Now.